Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your source for trusted analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. In the House of Commons today, Justin Trudeau came in, and even though it was the beginning of the season, he took one round of questioning. And what that means, he, he had some, he took the questions from uh, the Conservatives, French and English, and then he took the questions from the Bloc, and then he took the question from the NDP, and then he left the building. He, well, he at least left the room, the chamber. So the next round of questioning, obviously Pierre Polyev wasn't going to uh, ask questions if, if Justin Trudeau wasn't there. So he, uh, like the other party members started talking back and forth. And the Liberal Party put forward um, Freeland and Gould to do all of their talking. Whilst uh, Stephen Gilbo got to make one jab in there. And it was just a hodgepodge of Liberal MPs. So it was kind of interesting. Some interesting sparks were flying, some back and forth, some jabbing. I think that the Liberals are feeling the pressure of not accomplishing anything that the Canadian people want, and they're desperate to try to make themselves look like they're still in fighting shape. However, before we get into this episode, I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share this channel with all of your friends. I am turned down a lot in the algorithm, so every time you thumb up or every time you make a comment, every time you share it, it's basically telling the Liberal Party and the algorithm that you don't concur with censorship in any shape and you will pass this on and hopefully that can send the message that we uh, want to be heard, not turned down. As I was saying, there was a lot of backbenchers going. Freeland took some questions and the House Leader took some questions. And even Stephen Gilbo fielded one question. And I believe the idea is that Justin Trudeau will carry through a certain distance and then he will resign. And they're just trying to see which one of the other members can come to the front. Don't forget the liberals are obsessed with American, um, with America, with the United States of America. So seeing that the, the uh, Biden was so far behind and then all of a sudden um, Harris come, was put in place and all of her numbers have come up a little bit has inspired the Liberal Party. They think that if they do the same thing, the same thing will happen, that people will all of a sudden start voting, not on their pocketbook, not on what's best for their family, but all of a sudden just voting because it's a different person and you know maybe it's a girl instead or whatever the demographic happens to be that they're trying to sway which I think is the ridiculous way to vote. I mean, if you can't vote with your head, then don't vote, really. You have to make sure that you vote for what's best for the people, not for which way you feel that the wind blows. But I suppose that's a topic for a different video. In this one, I just want to let you hear some of the exchanges, and uh, there was a lot of sparks flying in this one. So, After nine years of the Liberal NDP government, taxes up, costs up, crimes up, times up. When the Prime Minister promised to quadruple the carbon tax scam, the leader of the NDP said, yes, sir, anything for his $2.2 million pension. And now, the Canadian Truckers Alliance released a damning report. The carbon tax scam adds more than $4 billion cost to farmers, families and food. Why don't they just call a carbon tax election now and let Canadians decide whether to quadruple or axe the tax for good? Yeah. News flash, uh, Mr. Speaker. We had a, a carbon I'll tax election in 2021, flash. and the Conservative Party had a platform where they said they would put in place carbon pricing in this country. Things they changed, Stevie. Have to go and look back at their own platform, Mr. Speaker. Again this morning, the parliamentary budget officer was in committee saying that 8 out of 10 Canadian families where carbon pricing applies get more money than what they pay in, in pricing, lot. Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, the Conservative Party of Canada continues to spew lies and disinformation on this issue. PBO proved that that orange jumpsuit, handcuff-wearing <laughs> minister is lying when he said that more Canadians pay into this. Now he leaned in and turned off all the microphones, so there was a spot for about two minutes where there was no sound, and I just thought I would take the opportunity to show you what the comment was about. I know it's the, uh, the first day back for members. We all spent this time with our riding. I'm going to ask the Honourable Member if he could rephrase this question, because he knows uh, that you can't. I'm going to ask him to... I 
am going to ask the honourable member to rephrase his question to not use language which is normally considered unparliamentary. The honourable member from Calgary Forest Lawn from the top. What this orange jumpsuit wearing, handcuffed loving minister doesn't understand is that the PBO proved Canadians pay more into this scam than what they get back. And it's done nothing to stop a single forest fire or flood. It's a scam and nothing else. And the leader of the NDP continues to prop this carbon tax scam up so he can get his $2.2 million pension. That's why he voted in favour of it 24 times. Call a carbon tax election now so Canadians can axe the tax and kick this carbon tax costly coalition to the curb. Hey. Amen. Axe the tax. Now, before I show you the response to that, it wasn't didn't come from Stephen Gilbo. It came from the House Leader uh, MP Gould, who's dressed in, completely in white, which I think is you know the Liberals love theater. So I believe that she was trying to send this message of you know I'm a good leader for this party. It's my suspicion. However, before I do that, I want to, you to appreciate something. Just to, it just points to the kind of personalities that we're dealing with. The House of Commons in Canada has two giant jumbo screens. You can see them circled in red right there. Now, if you, if you just let me come a little closer, you'll see that that's Pierre Polyev's seat. And in this particular shot, Justin Trudeau is up on the stage talking to everybody. They're, the place is packed, right? For whatever reason, I don't know what he was doing. But you can see that the Jumbos have a picture of him from behind because the cameras are in these two doorways. That's where they, those cameras go out and they pick up all of the um, goings on and then they are broadcast on the thing. So the MPs can see themselves and the MPs can see what you and I see. Now, across from Pierre Paulia would sit Justin Trudeau directly across from one another, not because it's conservatives, but because it's the uh, who is in charge and the, uh, and the official opposition. Those, the seating in the House of Commons is assigned. If you want to talk, you have to be in your own seat. Now, the House leader of the Liberal Party, they're going to be right there where that arrow that you see is. That's going to be roughly where Christina, Karina, excuse me, Gould, MP Gould, is going to be sitting when she makes this response. And what I want you to see is how many times she stares at herself on the TV screen, right? So she's pretending she's all outraged over this and over that and did a little, little Mr. Speaker, and she can't take her eyes off her own self. It, I mean, it is. Wow. Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, that kind of language from the member opposite is totally inappropriate, and quite frankly, Canadians deserve better. But it's what we've come to expect from the Conservative leader and his caucus, who would prefer. <laughs> so bad. I mean, vanity is not a strong enough word. <laughs> Colleagues, I'm could not hear uh, the Honourable Minister uh, give her response. It's difficult for me to hear that so that I can make sure that the language is correct. The Honourable uh, Government, Leader of the Government in the House, please, uh, from the top. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the language from the member opposite was completely inappropriate, and quite frankly, Canadians deserve better. But unfortunately, that's what we've come to expect from the Conservative members and their leader. And the reason why they're focusing on the price on pollution is because they want to distract Canadians from the real agenda, where they cut pensions for seniors, they cut childcare for families, they cut and defund the CBC at a time of increased disinformation. Mr. Speaker, they want to hide their real agenda from Canadians because they know that they won't like it. But Mr. Speaker, they need to be under that scrutiny and they need to be honest with Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Unbelievable. I mean, we might as well just put a mirror at her desk and just let her stare at herself there. And I think that she's feeling a lot of pressure. There was another exchange where she just, she, she was laughing and staring at herself in the, now I've spent a lot of time with people who, uh, they're, you know, they're, they're well, like their models and they, often are prone to this kind of thing where they just have to speak and look and look at themselves as kind of, um, well, I, like I say, it leaves uh, vanity behind. I'm not well versed enough to know if that's what narcissism presents like, or if it's something else, right? Like if it's not just being in love or watching yourself move, I don't really know, but I do know that it was kind of telling to watch. I know that she's pretending to be all outraged and she just is fixated on her own appearance. 
I believe the idea is for her to try to come forward as the lead, new leader of the, of the Liberal Party whenever they decide to make that switch, whenever they decide to make that move. There is some people I'm talking to that they're going to prorogue the parliament and it won't come back until January, which will make um, Jagmeet happy because then they can't get an election in before his uh, pension kicks in and it gives them another... Like you, if they prorogue in October, then they essentially will be out of parliament until all the uh, until the election results are in, which might end up being you know March or May or J June. So there's a lot riding on who's going to be leading the party. The way that they're acting today, I, I don't believe that it will be Justin Trudeau, despite them saying all of that. I think that they realize that it's just too he's just too worn out. And they, of course, are just trying to copy what was done in America, right? They, they don't have original ideas, these guys. It's all about theater to them. And they're not very good at it, as you could tell by the way that she was dressed in white and trying to be all indignant. I, I feel that w what really was m interesting in her statement was she was talking about how they want to get the CBC at this time of misinformation. Now, I have a video out about the misinformation. Uh, and it shows that the people don't trust the mainstream media. It's a high number. Uh, 50% Canadians don't trust the mainstream media. And if it's, if it's a provincial, 53% of people don't trust it. So there's no reason for her to be talking about the CBC. And, and Pierre Polyev has made no bones about it, right? We are no longer giving tax dollars to the CBC. And they don't deserve them. Have you ever tried to watch the CBC? It's 150 commercials for every half an hour, it feels like. So they're obviously getting a lot of money from different, they just waste their money. They don't know how to spend it. And the program that, that, that they put on is very, well, it targets a lot of groups of people. And, you know, nobody wants to be told that they're bad people constantly, especially not by a media outlet that's supposed to be funded by the people. So I don't, I don't know why she said that. I think that they're trying to just scare everybody, like their base gets scared real, rather quickly. So I believe that the more they talk about fear and division, the more it makes their base sort of rally around them. I'm guesstimating that, but it, it, it makes sense. It's the only thing that makes sense because you, you can't tell that to people who are just in the center. They will, they will be fed up with it. They'll be like, look, that's all you got. That's the only message you got because people listen, people are paying attention. Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I just wanted to show you some of the foolishness that's happening in the House of Commons while the rest of us are, you know, trying to get by and the rest of us are relying on these people to lead us out of this damage and destruction that they put us in. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.